This is how we make our allspice blend for the Christmas pudding. I have half a teaspoon of allspice in the grinder. I have half a cinnamon quill, which I'll crush up into the grinder. Half a teaspoon of cloves. One small to medium sized nutmeg crushed. Half a teaspoon of ginger powder. Quarter of a teaspoon of cardamom seeds that I've removed from the pods. Quarter of a teaspoon of coriander seed powder. And quarter of a teaspoon of mace powder. And grind them all together. Make sure you give the grinder a good shake to make sure all the lumps are taken out. Grind until smooth. But there you have it, all spice. So for our Christmas pudding, the ingredients are a pound of room temperature soft butter, a pound of brown sugar, preferably dark brown sugar or Muscovo brown sugar. We have nine eggs. I have three pound of mixed dried fruit with citrus peel, which I've been soaking in brandy. This lot has been soaking for two years, but you can soak it for just a few weeks if you haven't got the time to leave it for that long. We have half a pound of breadcrumbs that I've made from fresh bread. I like to include the crust. Uh, we have half a pound of organic white spilt flour, a quarter of a pound of slithered almonds. We have a level um, dessert spoon of the mixed spice mix that we have made. I have a teaspoon of bicarb soda and a pinch of salt in there. And then I have a gill of brandy. Now a gill is an old measurement for a quarter of a pint. So that's a quarter of a pint of brandy. Before we use the eggs, we have to whisk them. So I like to whisk them up to start with. And then to the eggs, I add the brandy and whisk again. Okay, so we're going to uh, beat the uh, softened butter with the brown sugar until we get a smooth, even consistency where when you rub it between your fingers, you no longer feel the uh, gritty, grainy sugar uh, and it has a nice, even colour. It's probably going to take about five to ten minutes and every so often you'll have to scrape down around the sides. So I like to put the sugar in, put the butter in, and start it off slow and just work the speed up. As you can see, it's changed colour, it's become quite lighter. And then when you rub it between your fingers, um, there may be a little bit of grittiness, but it's predominantly smooth. So now what I like to do is run this not too fast and pour the egg and brandy mix into it. And let that go for a few minutes until it's all broken up. Once the egg mix um, and the butter mix has come together, we scrape it out into a very large mixing bowl. making sure you get all of it out. And then to that, we're going to add the fruit, which I have strained to remove the excess liquid.
and the almonds. And give that a good stir until it's evenly incorporated. Once you've got them well combined, you'll need an extra set of hands and you need to sprinkle the breadcrumbs in slowly as you stir it in to avoid any clumps or large sections of just breadcrumb forming in the pudding. Do it nice and slowly, don't rush this process. Once you've got that all mixed in, all the breadcrumbs evenly mixed in, it's time to start adding the flour nice and slowly. Get someone to help you add it in while mixing it. If you're doing it solo, just add a little bit, give it a good stir and add a little bit more and keep doing that in a slow, consistent process. To save time, I mixed in the mixed spice, the bicarb and the salt with the flour and gave that a good mix together first. So as we're adding this in little bit by little bit, I'm getting a nice even distribution of those ingredients throughout the pudding. Okay, so to cook the pudding, you're gonna to need to put the pudding in some calico cloth. This is an unbleached natural calico and you need a piece that's between 90 to 100 centimeters square. And then once you've got that piece of calico, you wanna fold it into a triangle. And then fold it again and again, and again, and again. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip this into a pot of boiling water. You're gonna need a pot of boiling water big enough for the pudding to float around in. The bigger the pot, the less you'll have to top it up with water. We will have to cook this pudding for about six hours. So just always keep an eye on the water level. The pudding must be floating and Throughout the course of that process, you'll need to keep rotating the pudding so that all sides of the pudding are cooked equally. It will tend to want to float in the upright or upside down position, so it's just a matter of flipping it one way to the other. But blanching the cloth, carefully remove the lid, dip it in, not all of it. Pull it out, let it drain, and then I'm going to wring it out over the sink carefully. If you haven't got chef's hands, you probably will want to put washing up gloves on for wringing out the hot water. So now we've wrung out the cloth, wearing gloves and being very careful because it is scalding hot water in the cloth. While it is still steaming on the inside of the cloth, we can see the center. We want to now put a generous amount of flour. I'm using organic white spelt flour and you're gonna start rubbing it in. We wanna go out about halfway distance from the center to the edge, or maybe a little bit more, two thirds, all the way around, and you wanna be pushing and rubbing that flour in. You're trying to incorporate this flour into the fabric, and this is what's gonna basically stop water getting into the pudding and making it go mushy, and it's also uh, gonna create the skin on the pudding which helps preserve the pudding uh, to keep it for a longer period of time. If you need more flour, just add more flour as required and keep rubbing it in. Don't rush this process, and if you're in doubt, just add more flour and rub a bit more. Once you finish rubbing the flour in, just pick up the ends of it, and what we're gonna do is just shake out the excess flour into the sink, into the bin, out into the garden, wherever it's convenient for you. Now that I've shaken out the excess flour, that is what your pudding cloth should look like, ready to receive the pudding batter. Okay. To tie up our pudding cloth, we're gonna need some twine or some string. I like, I've got about four meters here. What I like to do is take the two loose ends and tie them in a knot. And then I like to Stretch it out, halve it over again. So I've got about a metre length, but there's four strands. You need it to be extra strong to tie around um, the pudding cloth. Whatever you do, do not use synthetic plastic um, twine, string or rope, because it will melt in the hot water or soften and stretch in the hot water and all the pudding mix will come out and uh, be destroyed. So now, we're going to put our pudding batter dead centre of 
the cloth, scraping it all out. Piling it up in the middle. Just like that. There's quite an art to wrapping the pudding and it will take practice. It's taken me 36 years to learn how to perfect this skill. You start off by taking the corners and then as you grab the alternate corners the bits that are flapping you pull them out just like that so that they're hanging <coughs> out lift the pudding and you grab it down low <coughs> and then what you need to try and do is keep tugging and pulling up on the pudding to try and get rid of as many of the deep creases as possible. Shallow creases like that are fine, but really deep ones like in here need to be pulled out and you're trying to get a nice even shape. Once you've got all of the uh, creases out, you're going to need another set of hands. This is impossible to do by yourself. You need to get someone else to grab the pudding off you trying not to lose the tension that you've just created on the pudding. Grab your string, come around underneath them and just do a simple over and under knot. Pull it tight, don't snap the string. Come around the other side, tie a knot. And again, do that about six times When you get to the final one, you want to do a clove hitch, which is left over right and then right over left to uh, finish it off. Okay, to make your job phenomenally easier when it's time to remove the pudding, to handle it while it's hot and to hang it, I suggest pinning the corners together. So open up the four corners, go one opposite corner to opposite corner, Using a safety pin, fasten it, then opposite corner to opposite corner, and fasten that one as well. What that will mean is it stops these getting all flapped around and tangled up while it's cooking, and it also means that when it's time to get this out of the pot, you can use any long handled object while this is a floating around in the water get it in like that and now you can lift the pudding without actually having to touch it while it's very hot okay so now we're going to put our pudding into the boiling water we've got a pot of rapidly boiling water what you want to do is when you first put the pudding in because the pudding is so large it's going to suck the heat out of the water so it's going to stop boiling so you want a very high burner and um, as much water without causing it to overflow. I only about half fill this pot and then I will top it up as time goes on. But it's as simple as taking the lid off, lowering the pudding in nice and gently, and then putting the lid back on. And now you want to let it cook for six hours. Okay, the pudding is now been boiling for right on six hours. Through that time I've been topping it up with boiling water from the kettle and making sure that it's been turned over about every 30 to 40 minutes to make sure that it's evenly cooked. Now the trick is using some tongs to grab hold of those two loops that we made earlier today, sticking a spoon through and then lifting it up and then just letting it drip for about a minute and once it finishes dripping you then hang the pudding up we now have the pudding hanging and we'll leave it to hang for between three to five days before 
removing the cloth to allow it to set. Okay, bring your pudding over to the sink and with a kettle of just boiled water, what you want to do is pour water just over the pudding itself for about 20 to 30 seconds, turning it over and pouring it. This helps release the cloth from the pudding skin so that you don't rip the skin off the pudding as you're taking it out of the cloth. So just turn it over a few times, make sure all sides are thoroughly soaked in boiling water. Okay, so the trick of getting a pudding out of the cloth is that it needs to be peeled. So the way I like to do it, so it doesn't get too messy, is to roll and fold and gently pull back on itself. So, as you can see here, the pudding skin's coming off, so I'm just going to try and push that back down with my finger. Push that a little bit down. You will lose pudding skin at the base of the pudding, but once you get past the creases, you generally find that it will come away nicely. And if you've got a spot like this, where it's just peeling off and you can't get it to come off, leave that to last and, and come back to that as the last piece. And you roll the pudding up on its side. And as you can see, the technique that I'm using by pulling it flat against the, the surface of the pudding, you get this beautiful skin. And that skin's important because that skin is what helps the pudding retain its moisture as it ages and helps preserve the pudding. there and remember that last side had the little bit that was sticking so I'm going to see how that goes down here you might need to put a little bit of a hand I've lost a little bit but that's not too bad considering the size of that that crease that's in there and that's normal can't help that Almost done. Just peeling that bit, just pressing it back in. Oops. If the bottom bit comes off, don't be too worried. And there we go. There is the Christmas pudding. Now it's best to leave it sit in the fridge for at least two or three days before consumption. And uh, it will last for many weeks, if not months.